In this video, I'd like to share with you how to run a one-way ANOVA and post hoc test using MATLAB. In this tutorial, we'll first check for normality, second run a one-way analysis of variance, third calculate the effect size, and lastly run a post hoc test. So to get started, let's load our data. We'll be using the sample data Excel sheet from class. So we'll start by running the read table command and storing the output in the variable ds. So with this sample, we have three groups. Let's separate them out into three vectors. Since we want to test for difference between these three groups, we likely want to use a one-way ANOVA. But before we can do that, we have to first check to make sure our data has a normal distribution. In the previous video, we created the ratios function, which calculates the skewness and kurtosis ratios. I'd like to further explore MATLAB's capabilities by creating another function. So the cool thing about MATLAB is you can not only create functions, but call functions within functions, which is exactly what we're doing here. We can see here that this new function calls the ratios function, which if we remember from the last video, takes the calculations of skewness and kurtosis and divides them by the standard error using the formula SPSS uses. Here, we're using the function to create a matrix that will test to see if the data is normal. We can also create a function where we call the previous one we just created and to create a Boolean or logic matrix. Basically, we want to ask MATLAB if our values fall in the range of minus 2 and 2. A Boolean output of 1 means the value is within this range, and 0 means it isn't. So, testing our three groups. As we can see, all of our values are in range, so our three groups do have a normal distribution, therefore we can use the ANOVA test. The ANOVA test in MATLAB's toolbox is quite easy to implement. The command is simply ANOVA1. By default, this command has two outputs, a table and a box plot. We can also individually store the significance value as well. So I'll enter P for significance value, table for a table with multiple statistical values that we'll use later, and stats. Then we'll close this and write ANOVA 1. MATLAB is finicky with data types, and as we can see in our workspace, we've stored the data as a table. MATLAB wants to use an integer format for the ANOVA command, or else it'll be angry and give us an error message. 
So we have to convert our data by either using cell to mat in the same way that the ratio matrix function did. Or another way we can do this is by adding braces to tell MATLAB we only want the integers from our table, like so. We would also need to use colons to tell MATLAB we want all the values in our table. However, we've stored our three groups as separate vectors. So we can simply write ANOVA1, use brackets, We can now see that we have a few different outputs, including this funny looking box plot. Like the box and whiskers plot we've seen before, the middle red line represents the median and the whiskers represent the minimum and maximum values for each group. The extra information we get from these plots includes these end lines, which represent the 25th and the 75th percentile, and the interquartile range would be in between. Also, the top and bottom of these angled notches represent the upper and lower bounds of the confidence interval, meaning this is the upper confidence limit and this is the lower confidence limit. We also see in the table output that MATLAB has calculated the sum of squares, the degrees of freedom, the significance value, and the F value. We can also call the P value here. We can see that our p-value is less than 0 0.05, so we can conclude that we have a significant difference. In order to calculate the effect size for a one-way ANOVA, we use a formula for eta squared, which is the sum of squares between groups divided by the total sum of squares. We could easily take these values as they are from our table output and divide them directly in the command window. But instead, let's utilize the capabilities of MATLAB to define a function. Here's our formula to do just that. And we can call this function And our effect size is about 0 0.06 away from a medium effect size. Since we did find statistical significance, the next step is to run a post hoc test. We need to do this because the ANOVA test tells us there is a difference somewhere in our data, but a post hoc test will show us where the difference is more exactly. This is possible by using Molt compare. C M H G names Molt compare and I'll input the stats variable we made previously. This outputs a helpful chart where we can see down here, it tells us that the difference is between groups one and two. I can also click these and it'll tell me where the difference is. To summarize, 
We ran a one-way ANOVA to examine the difference between three groups and found a statistically significant difference with an F value of 4.69 a p-value of 0 0.03 and an effect size of 0.439. We also ran a post hoc test that found a statistically significant difference between groups 1 and 2. We can find our means with the stats variable group 1 and 2 respectively and we can also calculate standard deviation with standard I hope this gave more insight into the full capabilities of MATLAB when testing for normality running ANOVA calculating effect size, and post hoc tests. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.